One of the reasons why people like to work at Cooper is because they get to pair design. Cooper has always done pair design. I mean, the first couple of years when I was a solo consultant, I worked by myself. But the, the day, uh, you know, I, I went to my wife in, in 94 and I said, honey, I, I think well, we've got a business here. And she said, yes, we do. And we hired a designer. And from that day forth, we did pair design. And it's vastly superior because because the design process is, is um, I mean, this is interaction design. This is problem solving. And it's not about um, making wireframes of pretty screens. You know, I'm talking about design, figuring out what does the product do, OK? And in order to do that, that's a complicated problem. and um, and what you need to do is you need to, you need to investigate your user community and understand what their desired end state is and, uh, and understand what motivates them to get there. And then you need to look for patterns and you have to do some very sophisticated analysis, understanding what, what, are, what are you, what controls, what mechanisms are you giving them and why and, and is it, is it overhead functionality to serve the product or is it appropriate functionality that, that conforms to the user's mental models that get them to their goals? That's a hard problem. And, um, and when you work alone, it's really easy to get stuck in your own thoughts. It's really easy to, um, to start imagining that you're the user and you're not. And what we found is that the single most effective tool for improving the quality of design is to work in teams of two. Now teams of more than two are really bad and we don't like them and we don't use them. Now, yeah, we have teams that are more than two, but there's a, a core of two people. So at Cooper, and now again, this isn't 100%, but it's well north of 90%, is that any client engagement will have two designers on it from beginning to end of the engagement. And those two designers will have only one project to work on from start to finish. So the designers are not task switching between projects. And designers, the personnel is not slotting in and out of the project. The other thing that we do is we have those designers do their own field research, field studies, because we feel that there's an enormous signal loss in handing over uh, field study information to the designers who have, then have to analyze it. And, and also what we find is that, is that people make the mistake, companies make the mistake of of um, interpreting field studies, informal ethnographic qualitative research as, as basic research, as fundamental research, and it's not. And what they do is they hire researchers. And, and Cooper doesn't hire researchers. We hire designers who know how to do research. Because researchers go off and research, and research is wonderful, it's great, it's something that you need, but it's not really directly applicable to product design, which is, which is what we do and what I talk about. But, but in the husband. same way that I grew up in the, in the world of, in programming, you did all your programming yourself. The whole notion of programming with others was crazy talk. Okay, and the Agile movement in the late 90s and early aughts started to uh, promote this idea of pair programming. And we had been designing long before that, although I have to say we stole the, the name because we like it, so we call it pair designing. Um, but it's, um, pair programming is, is remarkable because programming, as I learned it, is an internal monologue myself. Okay, and as soon as you do pair programming, it becomes an external dialogue 
And as soon as you start to talk over what it is you're doing with your workmate, all of a sudden the goofy wrong stuff just becomes self-evident. I mean, it's enormously, it's an enormously superior method to getting code done. And that, the idea that, that um, I mean, old school managers tend to think about things like productivity, which is basically not an operative concept in the world of digital products. I mean, productivity is not very useful. Quality is far more useful. And, um, and so pair programming really improves your quality. And, uh, and, and if you have bad quality, there will be hell to pay. You will have huge technical debt and it will end up not only being a shittier product that is less successful in the marketplace, but you'll, you'll pay for it in all the patching and changes and maintenance and, and dealing with the difficulties that, you're, that you've put in it to begin with farther down the line. Well, it's the exact same thing in pair design which is, it's not about productivity, it's about quality. If you have put a product out that has crappy design, nobody gives a shit that it costs you less money or came out faster. So productivity is simply not an issue. What is an issue is, is, is quality and success and finding the right users and understanding what their goals are. And pair designing is dramatically more successful at doing that. Now, Cooper, began to realize that there were certain pairs that worked better than others. And we began to see a very clear pattern. I mean, this is something that we're really good at, is seeing patterns and understanding them. And so what we did is we, we began to see that they were really, at first we called them personality types, but we've since come to realize that while that's true, it's really more of a job role. And, and we find, so we divided these two roles into two categories, and one we call generator, and the other we call synthesizer. And a way to think about them is, a generator is the motor in your boat, and the synthesizer is the rudder in your boat. And you need both. You need something to make you go, and you need something to make you go in the right direction. So the generator is the person who's who's bubbling full of ideas and has insights of how things work. And the synthesizer is the person who says, well, what about these other considerations? What about these other problems? How do you know that will work? How can we test it? How can we communicate it? And it turns out that, the, that, that a team with a good generator and a good synthesizer are remarkably effective. And, and we use them. We have people who uh, on at Cooper who are generators, they're always generators. And then, then we have people who are synthesizers and they're always synthesizers. And then we have people who can do both. And then we have people who do both occasionally, you know, or they'll work for six months or a year as a generator and then they'll work for six months or a year as a synthesizer. And it's okay. And the thing is, is that, is that this is not to say that a synthesizer is forbidden from having ideas during the design of, a, of an engagement nor is a generator forbidden from, you know, uh, working on the explication of the idea. But, but these two roles have been, have been really powerful. And it's, in many ways, it, it has two, I mean, it has two huge advantages. The number one advantage is, I, well, I should say really the number two advantage is it gives you better quality design. But the number one advantage is as a designer, after you've worked in a pair, you never, ever, ever want to work by yourself again. Because it's so much more fun, more challenging, more effective, and just flat out better to work as, in a team like that. And we augment our teams with other mentors or visual designers or, you know, just uh, other gray matter as necessary but that core of two is really key